for the people that don't believe in change or, or, you know, as, as Daryl Davis put it to me, you know, a tiger doesn't change his stripes. A leopard doesn't change his spots. A racist is always a racist. Two of those things are true. The, the tiger and the leopard don't change, but the racist right. can. For the people that th though believe that, um, it, can you put a finger on what has to take place for them to be able to come to a point where they do begin to believe that change is possible and that it's not just these people are evil and cruel and, and horrible. So we must force them out of existence rather than going through the process. You've detailed this entire ch time of, of bringing about a mindset shift, a heart shift of change. What do you think has to change for those people to begin to believe that, yeah, change is possible? They they have to be able to, and, and it's it's difficult for me to say this because I don't want to be preachy about it because I was one of those people that you couldn't reach mm. for so long, you know. But it was through empathy and compassion and and um and listening. Really, it was listening, listening to Daryl and Dia's stories because you know I was there. I met with them on, under the guise or under the the premise of I'm gonna put out this propaganda and speak for the movement. That's the only reason I met with them. And instead I saw their humanity and it helped change my life. So um, I, I think the people that are in that mindset where they, they don't believe that people can change, they need to see it for one and they need to um, experience it and be open to it and, and also realize their own uh, flaws in the process because that's, that's, that's where it's at. I mean, that's the problem. I, didn't recognize my own flaws in the process, my own flawed thinking that brought me into the, into the movement in the first place. And it's acknowledging that isn't always easy. And I'm not just talking about extremists, but I mean, people, people that are not willing to accept change in others uh, as well. Um, you know, uh, again, I don't want to be preachy about saying this because I don't feel like I have that, that, uh, uh, the right to do that because I was one of those people that couldn't, couldn't see, the humanity and others. Now I do. And, and, uh, it, it's, it, it's life altering Michael and it, it feels so good. It's, it's like all those emotions and, and feelings that were suppressed for so many years being in the movement, everything just comes in now, like a big wave of emotions and, and things like that. When you asked about like sitting at the Nobel C uh, center in the Coliseum next to Dia and she hugged me and grabbed my arm and she's very, very compassionate person. She kept, are you okay? Uh, you know, are, are, is there, uh, you know, seeing the film on the screen, are you okay with that? And just, just very, uh, very compassionate uh, human being. And if, if we could all learn a little more compassion like that and for our fellow uh, man, even people we don't know or, or complete strangers, just have a little bit more compassion and empathy and understanding. I, I think that's what changes the world too.